Hello everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. Um, I apologize guys because for a while I haven't had any upload. I think it's been like a month since the last upload I have. Um, I have been traveling for, you know, for more than two months now. Um, I started from Texas all the way to um, New Mexico to Korea and now I am in the Philippines and I am going to stay here for quite some time so I have this time to make a video for you guys so um, before we start I'd like to you know thanks to all my followers my subscriber here in YouTube and in Facebook so thank you so much guys for following me um, I really appreciate it and we have a lot to talk about today so um, my topic today is very different than usual um, it's because it's nice to have variation <laughs> right so um, since I've been traveling, I have been, you know, watching movies or series from Netflix because in, you know, in my, my place and my house, I'm always busy, always doing something, you know, cleaning the house, studying, working, um, etc. But since I'm traveling, I have this downtime during the evening so I watch um, some of the series in Netflix and if you guys haven't watched the series um, In the Name of God A Holy Betrayal um, I would encourage you to watch that series because you have it's amazing you will learn a lot about um, about cult and how they are the same and how they are different so I would encourage you guys to watch that um, I watched that um, series and it's amazing I, I would say that it's definitely a copy and paste of um, Apollo Kibuloi so um, do you know guys that even these days and age there's still people who are um, so ignorant that they would just believe um, the words of a person without even thinking without even analyzing um, what they are believing and who they are believing to you know the information um, nowadays it's just in the finger of our hands you know and our fingertips um, it's everywhere it's unlimited it's so amazing how our technology nowadays um, evolved from where we were um, 20 years ago you know if the technology that we have now um, we have it then when when I was younger when I was in my teens um, I wouldn't probably be um, so calm to to the cult to the, the KOJ you know the kingdom of Jesus Christ the name above every name under um, Pastor Apollo Sikibuloy but because our information at that time was so limited and you know we were poor uh, growing up um, we were so poor I have um, eight brothers and sisters and we I grew up in a single parent household and you can imagine how would that look like here in the Philippines um, because here in in the Philippines you only have rich and poor the in-between unlike in the US there's a lot of um, middle-class people but not in the Philippines either you are rich or poor in between there's there's few but 
it's not so many it's more on the poor side and you know having having a household without a father and my my mother you know um she's she was just a laborer so it was it was tough and and that's why um i'm not like giving um reason or justification to why we were um succumb to or got involved with with the church um i'm not trying to justify i'm just trying to um like tell my story and why i i got there um because the series that i was talking about the in the name of god a holy betrayal um it opens my eyes because i i saw the similarities so um, I actually wrote down um, the similarities between um, Jong Myung Sook, you know, the JMS, in short, JMS, the, who was the pastor of one of the cults in Korea in, you know, in early 70s. And it's so amazing because when Kibuloi was sent to Korea to preach while he was in the um, in the um, United Pentecostal Church. He was a youth pastor at that time and they sent him to Korea um, to, to gather or to preach to young people there when he came back to the Philippines. Um, he had this story that he heard a voice of God, an audible voice that's saying that I will use you, I will use you. And that voice happened three times. And he was wondering why God would um, tell him that he would use him while he already using him. Um, so is that a coincidence when um, it's actually the fact that there were few cult groups in the Philippines and he was probably um, realizing that it's easy to manipulate people in that way. So when he came back in the Philippines, he was doing the same thing like this cult groups has been doing to their members. So what's their, what's, what do they have in common? Number one that they have in common and the members of the kingdom of Jesus Christ, the name above every name, including the workers, um, the former workers who are outside now with me, and including the um, current full-time workers who are still there, if they have a chance to watch this Netflix series, that would open their mind. Because number one similarities that they have is the mysticism. Um, when... I was there, um, Kibuloi always have this concert crusade to every cities in the Philippines and the other, area, other part of the world. And we have one um, um, practice that we do. We go to the villages and send the invitation, you know, give the flyers to the villagers and ask them or invite them for this concert crusade and most of the villages that we usually targeted were the um the poor villages you know the depressed area because the the message is to give hope you know to the depressed um people to the oppress and so that was very um attractive to those type of environment and so, and then every concert we would um, get buses or jeepneys for the visitors and bring them to the venue, um, whether that is Aranita or Coliseum or, you know, the open field. Um, all the visitors um, were picked up and sent it back. You know, they, we transport them. So, and the same thing with this um, Jong Myung Sook 
um, church, they do the same thing. And they also focus on universities and, and um, colleges. They focus on student. Um, I don't know why, why is that, but I am just, you know, using my, my critical thinking. And I think it's because young people, um, young people are prone to um, manipulism. They are easily manipulated by people because when you are young, you don't know much about the world. You don't know much about life. You don't have any experience. And if someone will give you a purpose, you know, a so-called purpose um, of life that would be very attractive to young people and plus giving you the sense of belongingness um, that is very attractive to, um, to young people and that's what attracted me um, when I was young. So, and they also have desire to be followed by women and if you notice Kibuloy um, wherever he goes there are always young women behind him and the same thing with JMS S you know Jong Myung Silk from um, Korea the same practice wherever he goes there's always women behind him and it's not just any woman it has to be beautiful women it has to be attractive because um, they said, you know, this guy said that ugly is not, is not from God. And God doesn't like ugly people. And that's why Kibuloi, he always want to be surrounded by um, good-looking people, good-looking women, you know, attractive. You notice that in his um, program, especially before this, um, this problem came about. He has a lot of Ukrainian girls. Um, they always feature them on, you know, on the front of their of their programs, and not just Ukrainian girls, you know, um, international girls. This is there. There were also girls from Brazil, um, girls from Japan, and you know, they always feature those um, nice looking. Um, girls and their program so it's 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 very similar and that's just a few of the similarities they also claim to be pure man like after Kibulo is touching young girls um, that's not considered um, sin because he is God and he can do anything um, he is exempted by the law um, so he claimed that he is a pure man and but then um before the event any event that he has i can attest that because i have booked his hotel so many times before um he always stayed in his room for two days and of course not by himself but with somebody else and that was a woman and but then they come out and say that they are um they are holy they are pure men and they said they never they never touch a woman after touching young girls so it's ridiculous you know and but then when someone says something um like me since i spoke up since i stand up for the truth I have a lot of threats, but I'm not afraid because you're only afraid to God. You're only afraid if you committed a sin. If you, if I'm making um, accusation without any basis or I'm just making up story, then I would be afraid. But my story is the truth and um, I am not afraid. If I die doing something good for the people, then be it. You know, I'm not afraid. We only have one life. You guys, if we don't use our life to a cause that is greater than us, then what's the purpose of living? Right? 
So um, that's another thing. And then they also practice um, slave labor. You know, you notice um, the full-time workers and members, they, they put gold, they, they put financial gold, financial quota. And, but then these members, they don't have the means to um, actually provide those goals. So they came up with a um, solution to that. And one of the solutions is to um, conduct a fundraising campaign. A fundraising campaign through solicitation, through selling goods, selling peanuts in New York, you know, uh, workers in New York, they sell peanuts. Um, workers here in in the Philippines, they sell um, biscocho, they sell um, biscuits, you know. I just came to um, SM today and I was sitting in one of the coffee shops there. And this young girl came up to me and approached me. Um, she was selling um, stuff, and so I, I actually confronted her and told her that she is from Kibuloy because I was doing the same thing what she was doing now. I was doing the same thing before while I was in her age, and I felt so bad for her. Um, Mahal naman. I am going to post that, you know, just briefly, um, that girl. I feel bad, you know. And not just young girls like this one. Um, there are also um, senior citizens who are begging for money for Kibuloy. You know, I don't want to post the this old people because, you know, I respect. Uh, my mother taught me how to respect elders. And that's their choice. Um, they are old enough. They have experience in life. And um, that's what they choose to do. So be it. So, but anyway, so they are the same thing. They're practicing um, slave labor. And then they also have the same deal of creating bogus um, organization or fake organization just like Kibuloy, you know? He has like eight different organization who are all, the, that, that's all bogus, that's our, they don't have um, like beneficiaries. They said that this organization is for children, for example, or Tulong Samay Kapansanan is for the people who has um, physical um, discrepancy, uh, but then they don't have any beneficiaries. Everything is just going to Kibuloy's pocket um, to sustain his lifestyle, of course. But he's using these innocent people um, to gather money for, for him. You know, it's kind of like ants. You know, ants, they, they gather food for the rainy days while well, the king and the queen just sitting there waiting. And it's, it's, it's very similar, similar tactics. I actually have four pages of similarities that they have. Um, they also use Bible, you know. Um, they get passages in the Bible and twist that, use that as a metaphor so that it creates confusion. It creates an open interpretation to people. Just like, for example, the, the, um, the theory of Adam, you know, the first Adam, second Adam, and third Adam. Um, Kibuloy um, claimed that he is the, um, the third Adam. <laughs> That's why he is appointed and anointed by the by his god i don't know whose god is but i know that who is who is god of lie that is lucifer the devil that's what the bible said if you are a liar you are a scammer you're a scumbag then your father is lucifer the devil that's what the bible said but he twists the word of god to um for his benefits, for his um, gratification. And um, they also have um, mystical experience. If you were able to attend one of Kibuloy's service, um, they have this 
nice presentation on the stage. They sing a um, nice song and you feel the presence of God and you feel like you're, you're in the cloud. Um, they have the same um, experience with this other cult. Um, there's nothing wrong with that experience. The, the mistake there is using the emotion of people so that you can manipulate them and hold them hostage and they also have um they also they, it's the same thing they claim to be the subject of the prophecy so see kibulo he always claimed that he is the the second coming he he was the purpose of why jesus christ came so that jesus christ will produce the first son the first appointed son who is him he refer himself to be that person and um so you know it's it's a twisty twisty idea twisted and then they also um conduct social activities to attract people to attract young people and one of the social activities that they both have is youth camp you know children's camps adult camps um, but they are more focused on youth camps because um, at the end of the camp they would ask the young people to offer themselves God will call you for this purpose um, there is no greater um, greater honor to serve God through him so it's always that way and then and then there their methods also the same, you know, young people, all the delegates will sleep on the tent outside being, you know, burned in the middle of the day when the sun is hot and gets cold in the middle of the night when the night is cold. <clears throat> so it's very, very similar. And then during the youth camp, they both spot um, good looking girls. You know, and then when they spotted a good-looking girl, then they would treat that girl very special. And then the coordinator or the administrator would introduce that girl to pastor because um, pastor wants to know that girl. So, and then they start the relationship that way until the youth camp is over. But then if you have a very um ordinary face you know you're not good looking at all you won't even get a look from kibuloi so that's a fact and then they also they both require that everything that happens in the inner circle has to stay in the inner circles you know keeping the secrets and why why where is the transparency if you don't have anything to hide why can't be transparent right so see just just use your 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 mind your brain if you have nothing to hide why don't tell you know why everything is hush hush in the inner circles i was there before that's why i know i know a lot and that's probably not a good thing for them and that's why i always get in trouble before while i was there because i was so curious i was so inquisitive and <clears throat> they also have um so they when they spotted pretty girls they suddenly became their favorites so if we are following God's will and we are doing God's work, why can't we be transparent? Why can't we be transparent to everything that we do? Our records, our activities, and provide reason why. Why it's okay. Why it's okay to, to sleep with young girls. You know? Give them reason. 
You said it's it's not wrong, it's God's will because sleeping with young girls is cleansing them, considered cleansing them because you are preparing them to be the bride of God. Then why 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 hide? Tell that to the membership. Tell that to other workers. You know, why hide? Since when you're hiding something, that means you know in yourself that that's not what you're supposed to be doing. But you're doing it anyway. You even said before that you're the only one who overcame the flesh. And that's why you purposely separate married couple, married members. They have to sleep from, you know, different bedrooms because you don't want them to sleep together because you're the only one supposed to enjoy sex. You're the only one who's supposed to enjoy love making to the people, to the girls that doesn't even like you. The young girls that feel dirty sleep, sleeping with you, you know. It's, it's ridiculous. And then they also have these rules, pastorals. I was including myself, you know. We were not allowed to even look at our opposite sex. You know, otherwise we would be considered that we, we betrayed. We betrayed our king, we betrayed the son because we talk or we looked at the opposite sex. You know, what kind of brain is that? And then they also called the brides of God. You know, all the pastorals are the brides of God. So think about it. Who is the God there? And call it a bride of God. So that means if you're doing something to you, if you're doing something or you call somebody to be your bride, that means you are doing something to them that the husband does to their bride. Is that making sense? Am I making sense here? Please tell me if I'm I'm saying BS here. Am I making sense? If you call somebody to be your wife, to be your bride, that means you are doing something that the husband does to the bride or to the wife. And what does husband do to the wives? Hmm? So that's what he called to... Um, the pastorals to these young girls. And then when you sleep with them, you consider, you consider cleansing them. And that's why even though they don't like it, even though it's considered rape because it's un, there's no consensual, and it's okay because you are cleansing them, their spirit. Is this spirit really go through the body of a person? And is your body has to go through their body in order for their spirit to be clean? What kind of brain is that? How is that making sense? And, and then you claim that you're the only one who overcame the flesh. And then you entered into the cave of the flesh because you overcame. You're the only one who can enter and, and get out without any, any feeling of um, guilt. That's why, because you are psychopath. Only psychopath can do that. There's no um, normal person can do that. You go enter. You know, he used this a lot of metaphor. The cave of the flesh. Oh, pastorals. Pastorals who are still there. What is the cave of the flesh means? What does that mean to you? And it's okay because he is the only one that can enter and out, go in and out to the cave of the flesh. It's, it's Kadiri, you know. It's gross. And that's why 
a lot of these pastors also came out. They felt dirty. Some of the pastorals, these Ukrainian girls, they cried in the shower room. They scrubbed themselves until they bleed because they felt that they are, they, they were so filthy for what you did to them. And now you came up and say that you are holy, you are innocent. Even Satan said he is in innocent. And you claim you are the perfect Adam. You are the perfect and the last Adam that would come to save the world. Are you okay? And then you consider, they both consider that their, their birthplace are or is holy. Just like the Tamayong, you know. He was born there and that's why Tamayong is holy. Same thing with JMS. Wherever he was born, it's considered holy. They go there and then they pray, they worship. And then they both claim that Jesus reincarnated through them. So what is the, um, the theory of reincarnation? Is that really a Christian or is that a Hindu? A Hinduism theory or Buddhist. So they both claim that, that they were Jesus. Jesus who lives in them. They were the body of Jesus and that's why don't question them. That's why workers, people should not question them because if you question them, you are from the devil. You are cast out and you should go to hell. <laughs> and they both infiltrated high school, universities to find young converts, you know. And then when you stand up and you call them out their action, they would say that your accusations are all fault. All of the accusations are fault. Seriously? All the accusations are fault. When you are caught in the act, it's still fault. Oh my gosh. Just like this kibuloi, there are boxes and boxes of evidence gathered against them. And that's why they extend the hearing from, you know, from March 20 of 22, of 23 to March 19, 2024, because his lawyer don't have sufficient time to really evaluate all the evidence that was gathered against them. And then he still say that he's innocent. See the similarities that they have? Just like some of our politicians here in the Philippines. You caught them in the act killing somebody, they still said that they're innocent. You caught them in the act um, raping people apart. They still say that they're innocent. So that's, that's what this Kibulo is doing, the same thing. And then when, they, when you press them hard, when they are pressed, they would execute the killing because they said that in the Bible, killing is necessary. Killing is not sin. See, necessary killing is not sin because the prophet also killed someone they don't like. And that's why there, there are a lot of people who got killed. You know, the full-time workers who spoke up before me who speak up before me, they were all silent forever. And that's what they want to do to me. But can they touch me? I have God, you know. If God is for me, who can, who can be against me? So he can, they can maybe kill my, my body, but my spirit will 
remain. And if I'm not the one talking, someone will come up next to me. Because the Spirit of God is not going to die when the body is dead. You know, if you are called to do something and your life got cut short due to um, fulfilling your calling, then someone will come up and will do the same thing what you're doing. And that's why I'm not afraid. You know, we only have one life. We all have one life. And what life, what kind of life do we have if we don't commit, we don't use our life for the cause that is greater than ourselves? You know, what kind of life? Life's supposed to be adventure. You know, security is not a thing in this life, in this world. If you like security, you'll be poor forever. You'll be scared forever. You have fear in your heart forever. But if you live life as God wants you to live daily, you're happy and you're not afraid. You are courageous to do the things that God wants you to do. And that's exactly what I'm doing. You know, I want to save as many people as possible not to go into this hole, into not jump, jumping to the hell, you know, because if they get converted, they get manipulated, their life on earth will be hell. And then when they die, they will also go to hell. Well. As long as they're already used to being in hell, I guess what's the problem, right? So, <clears throat> and then they both claim that they are the Messiah. They are the groom. They are the second coming. That's what Kibulo is claiming. He is the second coming. He is even the one that would sign this. Um, I don't know if um, you guys know about this. Um, he came up with something to make money. I think that was um, last year, December 25. He said that he would sign this um, this slip for his members if they purchase their their salvation. And and every every category of the member or in the heaven is different um, different value. You know, they have 10,000 pesos, 50,000, 200,000. It's dependent on where do you want to be in heaven. And then people fall for it. You know, how crazy is that? <laughs> oh, my God. I don't want to laugh because it's not funny. But it is funny because you know that it's big bullshit. You know. And then when... When you are, when you call them, or you you check, you know, you do the check and balancing thing, then they would say that um, that is the crucifixion. They are crucified. Kiboloi has been crucified so many times because he's been doing the same thing. Even though, you know, if you are a person who truly obey God, then you would obey the law of the land, right? But Kibuloi, he doesn't respect the law of the land. You know, when, when the U.S. government um, send them the, the um, indictment, he just ignored it. And they were doing the same thing, the same practices that they're doing, selling stuff. You know, doing the fundraising, um, conducting solicitation, begging for money, um, using their bogus organization. Mm, they don't care, you know. But if you are, if you are another citizen, if you are different, then you would listen and obey the law, right? But he doesn't because he said that he's... He is above the law. He is the law. 
because he is God. And so, but then when you check him and you call out his actions, his deeds, then he is crucified by people. You know, he's considered Jesus. We crucified him because he's doing the good thing, which is to use people for his benefits, use people to gather money for him, use young girls for his um, last full satisfaction. And he said that his suffering is for all mankind. It's ridiculous. And then he also claimed before that he enter heaven. You know, he's been going in and out from heaven. And I believe that too. You know, I believe it. So every time his birthday, usually that's what he told us, you know, because I was one of the pastoral that he goes to heaven and he should not be disturbed. We have to be quiet. But then Felina Salinas is sleeping with him in his bedroom. Came out. Felina Salinas still in his PJ coming out from his bedroom. And that's what they have been that he's talking about. And he's been raptured. Crazy. You know, God, Jesus never promised us anything that's too good to be true. When he promised something, it's true. But Kibulo, he promised things that's too good to be true. A lot of them, you know. How many members still remember the time when he said that there won't be any members who are poor anymore? Because everyone will have their own house, their own car, and their own businesses. And what happened? You know, those members who has, who has um, resources, they're all gone. All of them, they're poor as rats. You know, but then he, he bragged his, um, his... He is giving his um, kawangawa as though that he is, he is providing good life to his members and his workers. He doesn't even know what his members is eating because even the, the food that or the money that they would have spent for their family to buy food, they would give it to Kibuloy. That's how crazy that is. And then, when I was there, you know, there were a lot of assault that's happening. Because we were in the morning before they sent us outside to conduct a solicitation or harana at that time. They would tell us that if anyone that would um, go on our way, it's okay to fight with them. It's okay to punch them. It's okay to be physical with them. You know? And to me at that time, that was just a norm. Something, it's a norm. But realizing, that's terrible. And then when they don't like somebody, they can just easily kill them. And nobody would say a thing. You know, the family of that dead person would even know what happened or where they, where that person is because they just throw it in the dump site. You know, the illegal practices, the fraud are just nothing but normal. You know, I didn't know that having Vogus organization, you know, I know back then that the organization that we have, they're all going to, to the church. You know, the Pag-asa ng Buhay, Tulong sa May Kapansanan, um, Children's Joy Foundation, Handog ng Pagmamahal, Shavers, Psalms of David, you name it. You have different type of 
organization and then they have this um, gift giving after you know January or February or November they conduct this gift giving 10 beneficiaries for each um, organization but then we do the solicitation all year round we collected millions and millions of pesos and dollars from the public for this so-called organization for these so-called um, beneficiaries but they're all going to Kibuloy and that's why you said that Kibuloy is one of the richest um, richer in the world it might be but he did not work for it he steal it from people he used people to steal from others for him and that's his that's that's the fact and then they they told us you know that if someone will even touch us even just you know just touch a regular touch you know not a sexually means of touching that's considered betrayal you know because we belong to god we belong to kibuloi it's it's ridiculous but how can we stop this what can we do you guys what can we do you know it's really hard based on my experience when you are um, when you are manipulated you are brain brainwashed you don't know and you think that um, you are in the right path that was you are serving God because you are basing your intellect based on your desire and that's what I had before too you know my only desire was to serve God and that's why I end up there and when I came out I actually blamed God on why he had me go through what I went through you know and knowing realizing that I was just being scammed by by pastor and it's so unfair for me at the time because I didn't realize I was like God did you scam me all I want is to serve you and then you sent me there I didn't realize that God has a purpose in my life you know that nobody can do nobody can do as best as I can you know and then he sent me to the US he sent me to school there he trained me and then I I realized that God has a different purpose in my life and I am fortunate because there's so many people who are so afraid to speak up who are so afraid to stand up for the truth but God gave me the courage to do the opposite to stand up and face the challenges you know heads on but being by myself I can't do not I can't do much but with all of you with all of us together spreading spreading awareness so that people will be aware because one soul that we save there's million angels in heaven that would rejoice for that soul so guys let's spread awareness you know let's not stop until we get to the end zone and I'm not here to seek for justice I am here to save the people of God from going into the hell and taking the people my people from the hell and bring them out for God you know I'm hoping that they, they the help 
for them will be provided when time comes. So guys, let's pray for them. And thank you for following me, you know, all these times. And thank you so much for supporting me here in YouTube and on Facebook. And again, um, I give all the glory and honor to God. Um, you know, as I came here in the Philippines, God spoke to me in a very meaningful way. I, I have been wrestling with God for a while. You know, with everything that I have experienced with Kibuloy, everything that I have experienced going out and being in the world and have, you know, facing the confusions in my mind, it was a lot for me to bear to the point that I actually told God that I, you know, I don't want to believe him anymore. But then he never gave up on me, you know. And my trip here in the Philippines gave me a, a chance to have a intimate relationship with him, you know, restart the candle, the promise that I made to him when I was 15 years old, that I would commit myself to him and him alone. And that commitment came back to me. And to me, that is a great privilege. That is a, a, a that's amazing. You know, so I really thank God, you know. Um, there were times that I, I, I feel like I was atheist or I was agnostic because I thought that God was just playing with me. But everything that happens in our life, you guys, God saw it beforehand. He knows that we have to go through this for our, for our benefits. For, so that his purpose in our life will be uh, manifested in his own way. There are things that we don't understand in a spiritual realm, but um, God knows how or what we can handle. So I really, I thank God for the privilege that he gave me. Um, you know, um, I never... I don't know if you guys heard me talking like this before. You know, I was furious before because my heart felt a lot of pain from the past. But then when you let go the pain, the fear also will be gone. And I let that go. And I feel in my heart this feeling of this feeling of fulfillment, this feeling of happiness, doing the things that you know that is greater than you. So I hope that you guys will, um, you know, will go with me in this battle. Um, I am not battling against anybody. In fact, I am, I am only racing to take God's people from the hands of the devil. And I appreciate you guys' prayers. Um, I don't think I would be in this position right now without your prayers. You know, my prayer may not be good enough because a lot of my prayers then, you know, I always like saying God, saying things that if I were God, I would be disappointed to myself. But God is so grac gracious. He is so merciful and He gave me the mercy he gave me grace that I need daily and that's good enough for me, you know. So to my, um, my people, my co-workers who are, you know, turning their back from God and I do understand where you're coming from, 
but I hope that one day you would also realize that God is not done, is not through with us. You know, He's not here yet. He's, our work is not finished. We have work to do. We were called to be there and we were called to come out because we have purpose. We have things to do. We need to save these people. So you guys, be courageous. Don't be afraid. Wag na kayong matakot. God is with us. God is with us. So wag na kayong matakot. For all my um, my former co-workers who are afraid to come to the Philippines because of the threat or because of what they they think that would happen to them. You know, sometimes fears is a self-inflected. We think about it and we tell to ourselves that that's going to happen even though it's beyond, you know, it's not even close to reality. So you guys, fear is from the devil. He put that in our hearts so that we can't do the right thing. But if the fear is taken away from us, we can do the magnificent and we can glorify God in His own way. So guys, God cannot do anything if we are not willing to give ourselves to His work. So thank you so much. I pray that, you know, everyone who would listen to me um, will be blessed. And let's pray for, um, for the other people who are still there inside of Kibuloy's kingdom, that their eyes, their mind, the eyes of their mind will be open and God will reveal to them, give them the wisdom, give them the, the knowledge to know the truth give them the opportunity to start a new life, a new beginning. Because every day is a new day. Every day is a gift. And we need to use that gift to glorify God. So, guys, um, please continue to pray for my people and for me. Um, I know that you've been with me fighting all along, you know, racing, running this race together. I hope that we will take this race all the way to the end soon uh, together because if we are together, we are more stronger. So thank you guys. And um, I hope that you would also watch the series that I was talking about so that you have, you know, broader, broader um, ideas of what this cult is doing and how they are different and how to spot them. Because Kibuloi is not going to be the first and nor is the last. There's going to be next that would come out after him. So it's very important to spread awareness, not just for Kibuloi's sake, but you know, for the coming, for the future. Let's prevent, you know, prevention is better than cure. You know, in my world, in my professional world, corrective and preventative action is very important. You know, so that's what we need to do. We have to correct what is going on and we have to prevent from happening again. And in order to do that, we have to work together and spread awareness and spread the knowledge, you know, seek for knowledge, seek for growth, you know, knowledge in a spiritual way, knowledge about God, you know, the Bible, and who really is. If we know Jesus, we know God, then we would know that these other, these impostors, they're not God. They're fake gods. But if we don't know God, know enough, or we don't read our Bible, we don't understand it, 
then we would be easily be manipulated by someone like Kibuloy. So guys, let's let's work together until it's it's we get to the end zone. You know, I don't know when would that be. I don't know. You know, we a lot of people when you know when God called us to be out of this world, there's things I'm pretty sure that there's things that's unfinished. You know, there's work that needs to be done and it's not done yet, but at least we are doing the things that we should be doing until the end. And if we die in the middle of doing something that God wants us to do, then be it. Right? Then praise God. So again, um, I, I, if you haven't done it already, please watch the In the Name of God, a holy betrayal in from Netflix, and also the um, the sweet in, I think in Hulu. So it's it's amazing. So thank you guys, and see you again next time and my next upload, my next video. Um, I'll be staying here in the Philippines, and I'm gonna go to the cave <laughs> you know mm -hmm. uh, I have this friend who told me that I'm not just a stone of David but I am one of uh, Mishrak and Shidrak Abednego because I am going to I am going to face the lion or at least visit the lion and see so thank you guys, and I love you guys. God bless us all um, as we go through life. I hope that um, God will continue to guide each and every one of us and protect us.